Another fantastic card from Pokemon 151 is Bang Boom Chain Electrode. This card is very, very fun to play and has a lot of interesting synergy with some cards that have existed for a while now. Bang Boom Chain for one Lightning Energy does 20 damage, plus we can discard any number of Pokemon tools from our Pokemon in play, and then the attack does 40 more damage for every card we discarded in this way. That means that we can deal a ton of damage damage for a single energy as long as we have a bunch of tools in our play area. Now we can use this Honchkrow V with boss pockets to get a whole bunch of different tools in play. The ability boss pockets allows us to attach four of them to our Honchkrow. So if we have one Honchkrow in play, that's four items attached to our Pokemon plus potentially four more. You can see how we'd very quickly get to some quite significant numbers with our Electrode. We are also playing four copies of the brand new Leftovers Pokemon tool, not necessarily for the effect, but instead to synchronize with the new Voraciousness Snorlax, which will allow us to get those leftovers from the discard pile back into our hand. With two Snorlax, we can bring all four leftovers back and have four cards to discard every single turn. And finally, if we do get ourselves into a position where we've discarded all of our tools, then that's fine. We still have one big hitter left in the deck, and that is Rotom V-Star. This Lightning-type V-Star Pokemon has Scrap False for two Lightning Energy, deals 80 damage, plus we can Lost Zone any number of tools from our discard pile and deal an extra 40 damage for each card that we put in the Lost Zone this way. So you can see we sync them up, we put the, the cards in the, in the discard pile thanks to Electrode and then we put the cards in the Lost Zone thanks to our Rotom V-Star. It's pretty good, it's a pretty good combination. So you can see the list here, it is scrolling very very slowly up and down the screen right now. It's very difficult to do that whilst also talking to you by the way, so let's make sure it gets back into the right spot. If you'd like you can check it out down in the description. It's it's there for you to copy into Pokemon TCG Live whilst you're there. Like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you think of this Electrode. I think that it's a lot of fun and it could potentially beat some meta decks. Like, I think we can bang boom chain for knockout a couple of times here. We'll see how we go. We'll see if we can't get this game with Electrode. And one card that I forgot to mention and probably should, to be brutally honest, is this Luxray with explosiveness. It's a stage two that we can put into active as long as we start with it. So I'm happy to do that. It's very, very useful. We can then grab our Maridon with a Nest Ball and use that tandem unit ability to really grab as many lightning Pokemon as we like. We've got a Voltorb here, which is fantastic. We've got the ability to attach an energy, and I'm thinking attaching to the benched Voltorb is probably not a bad idea. Uh, we don't necessarily need to worry about it. Uh, and then we can also potentially Ultra Ball. I think it's best though to just use Rotom's Instant Charge. We attach that stone to it just in case we get Ionode or Judged. And we'll draw a bunch of cards, and those are some solid ones, like not terrible cards to get off of the top deck. You notice that Luxray in the active, very, very good with free retreat, 160 HP, very strong for a starter, but it also has Seeking Fang for one colorless energy, deals 50, and we can search our deck for up to two trainer cards, which is super, super good in this deck. It allows us to search for consistency, like supporters or ultra balls, search out our Pokemon, whatever it might be, or we can even grab a tool or two to attach to our Pokemon. Now, it looks like our opponent is grabbing themselves out a very, very interesting bench here. I'm uh, I'm not 100% sure how I am going to deal with the Turtwig, but that's okay, we'll figure it out. It looks like they've even got the Call for Family up on their Iono as well, so uh, they're probably pretty set here. We, on the other hand, are in a little bit of trouble being Ionoed there. We now don't have energy, we don't have all of those lovely Pokemon, they're all to the bottom of the deck now, but we can still use the Artisan to get our board set up. So we do have Artisan, we've got Maridon, it's actually not too bad here. Uh, as long as we find an energy, I'll actually be quite happy. So let's see what we can do. We can pop that Honchkrow down. We definitely want the Honchkrow to be in play, because uh, then we can chuck all of these really uncomfortable tools that we're not a big fan of uh, keeping necessarily. We can throw those onto our Honchkrow. Uh, Honchkrow with three tools on it now, very, very handy. I think uh, it's also probably worth just going for like a tandem unit here. 
in tandem unit and maybe grab another Electrode or a Voltorb, sorry. Um, and now the reason that we played that Star Alchemy uh, Forest Seal Stone down is so that we can come through here and grab another supporter. So we can shuffle these cards to the bottom of our deck and draw a fresh six, which is very, very handy. We just want a Lightning Energy. That's pretty much all that we need here. And we do manage to find it. So very, very good. We also get the Electrode. So if we want to, we can potentially retreat and attack with that. But since we are hitting into this Pidgey for weakness, we may as well use Seeking Fang for that KO and grab ourselves two more trainer cards. I think we might go for the Iono and a Bravery Charm. Just another tool to chuck down. We have four tools at the moment, plus a Town Store and an Iono. So plenty of tools coming down next turn. And an Electrode out of the prizes is pretty gosh darn good. Like, frankly, that's a good, a good setup. Now, I mean, I don't know how we're going to beat our opponent here. Because our opponent is playing a deck that I've not necessarily seen a huge amount of. And that is... Uh, the very, very frightening Torterra. So we'll see whether we can manage to beat that. Um, I'm also very aware that my mic is ever so slightly far away from me. So just a moment as I organize myself here. Hopefully you can still, hopefully you can still hear me. There you go. Now we can get some real action here. How do you, how do you like that, mic? There you go. And uh, we still wait for our opponent to play their their turn. So it's all good. You've not missed anything. Um, we're just going to cruise along here. We're going to continue to take as many prizes as we can. We've got Electrode. We've got a potential knockout warmer Rotom V at some point. Rotom V and V-Star both sharing the same attack. So that's very, very good. Really what I would like to do is I would like to get an energy and attach it to the Rotom V at some point. Because that would be fantastic. The attack with the Luxray obviously very good. But if we get Iono to 5 and we don't find an energy, then this could be hard. Um, but, you know, whatever. We just have to wait and see. Our opponent is taking a very long time to click the buttons over there. I hope that they haven't just disappeared. Because if they've disappeared, this is going to be very, very awkward. Also, you might notice that I'm like tilting around a little bit. Uh, I'm trying a new camera position because I feel like you being front on to me here is actually really nice. But the issue with that is that it actually covers up my screen a little bit, specifically my opponent's bench. So sometimes I'm looking over here just to see exactly what's going on because that's where my OBS is. Sometimes I'm looking around because I just want to see, you know, what's actually there. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Do you like the camera angle? Do you mind it off to the side? A bit of a tilt to it, perhaps? Maybe I even put it on the other side. Maybe I could put it over there. Wherever over there is. I don't even know. Anyway. This is wild. This, uh, this Torterra deck's actually crazy. They're gonna put like a bunch of Pidgeots and Pidgeotos and stuff in play. That would be cool, cool. Okay, we've got an Electrode, and now we can actually start to really show off this deck in its full glory. We've got all of the tools that we could possibly want in the world. We can attach all of those here. We can play the Town Store, and then I can just Iono here. I might even choose to grab another tool just before I do that. We will grab ourselves the Cleansing Gloves. They are completely dead in this game. We'll throw those to the active. And then a single Iono here. Just hit an energy would be great to be able to power up another Electrode or the Rotom. That would be fantastic. Since I wanted it, I was never going to get it. So instead, we will just continue to take a look around. The Rotom V-Star, a bad prize to have. Let's retreat into the Electrode. And then we can then we can click the bing bang boom bing bang boom bang boom 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 chain bang bang boom chain bang boom chain knockout ultimately i'm just trying to decide here what stones i want to get rid of i'm going to get rid of those two and we'll take that ko for exactly 100 damage probably now that i'm thinking about it could have could have got rid of the stone on the Rotom, maybe? I don't know. We found the Lightning Energy, though, which is good. So if our Electrode survives a turn, which I'm not expecting it to, that's horrifically bad. Um, I think it's just Maridon on Luxury. That's so unfortunate. But it gives us space on our bench. Right, we can grab ourselves another copy of Volt. We're going to get ourselves that, uh, that lovely Snorlax at some point here to grab those leftovers back. That could potentially be a choice. Maybe should have used those elect uh, those electrovers, those leftovers early, but we'll wait and see. Uh, our opponent rare candying into the Pidgeot, so now every single turn they will be able to search for exactly the card that they need. 
Uh, and with the extra search for Pokemon from Grottle, this is actually looking like quite a uh, quite an impressive piece of uh, of Pokemon deck building. I actually really really like the concept here. You never know. I might once I've done my one five one decks, I might have to steal it. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this deck. I know I've said I feel like I've said that four times. Let me know in the comments if you're sick of being asked questions. To try and drive engagement. Let me know. Or otherwise, just leave an emoji for the sake of engagement. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm so tired. It's a tiring experience, this one. It's going to very quickly... Uh, just going to very quickly check something over here. Nothing's, nothing's going on. It's fine. We're all, we're all still recording. Just need to make sure that everything is still going okay. Um, now, obviously, with the Pidgeots in play, that's a really good position for us to be in. Our Electrodes will be able to take a knockout on those Pokemon quite easily. A Luxray in play, plus a Reversal Energy, so they'll be able to take a prize here. I'm also going to use Artisan, which is really actually quite good for us. Uh, means that we can use Artisan, get ourselves a Snorlax if we want to, or even another Voltorb. We'll be able to follow that up with a Nest Ball as well to grab the cards that we need exactly. Then replace the Stadium with Town Store and grab a tool so we can do some more damage with our Electrode. So I like this quite a lot. Our opponent's just setting their board up with a, a whole bunch of evolved Pokemon, and maybe now is the time for Torterra, a really, really strong Pokemon. It's also weak to uh, strong against the uh, the Charizard decks, which is good. So definitely worthwhile if we can get it to go. Maybe, like I said, we can do that in our next couple of videos at some point. Well, I mean, we won't do it the next one because there's definitely other things that we can be doing, but that's okay. All right, let's go for our Artisan here. We can grab ourselves either a Snorlax or a Voltorb. Voltorb I do like. I've got one more Electrode left and a couple of leftovers. Four energy in the deck is a little bit of a... Uh, bit of a frustration. Look at that turn that we missed energy. If we'd been able to find it, that would have been really, really good. Uh, we're going to Nest Ball here. Uh, we're just going to grab another Rotom because I do want to get an EXP share onto Rotom as quickly as possible. And Town Store should be able to search one out. I do just want to make sure that we have a available attacker. That Rotom V must be able to attack at some point. And this will give us a really, really good chance. We can then also Energy Search. Uh, and then begin the Big Bang Boom. We'll Bang Boom Chain, 20 plus 40. We need to discard a few here, so let's go for one, two, and I think we need to discard a third as well. Might even need four, I don't actually know. I don't I don't need to do math, so I'm gonna discard four. That was way too many. That was way too many. I could have I could have discarded one less and still got that knockout. But that's fine. We get the leftovers off of the prizes and the town store is still in place. So that is good. Uh, and as we know, if the Electrode gets knocked out, then we can go in with the Rotom V next turn. As long as all stays the same, we will be in a position to attack with at least a Rotom V. That v stubbing in the prizes, though, is very, very awkward. I don't like that. I'll have to wait and see if we can unprize it. Oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, Town Store from our opponent. They search through they, their deck. They can also quick search as well. They'll be able to... Search pretty much whatever cards they want this turn. Get a variety of them and then start attacking with those Torterras. And there aren't any in play at the moment, so we'll have to wait and see. They can obviously search for them with the Grottle, so that's not a problem. And here comes one of those Torterra into play. We also have that Artisan Stadium now. Again, could potentially be a way to grab ourselves a Snorlax so that we can attack with an Electrode. But we are expecting a knockout here on this Electrode, so definitely something to keep an eye on. We might have to attack with the Rotom V, which is not ideal by any stretch. If we have to attack with the Rotom, then we potentially lose a knockout in the next couple of turns, which is not great. But that's okay, they play down a Turtwig. This is, uh, this is actually turning out to be quite a close game. I wasn't expecting this Grottle deck to be so difficult to uh, to outspeed, but you know what? It is managing it. It's managing it quite well, and I wouldn't be surprised here if they do get a Gust Knockout at some point. Like, obviously dealing a ton of damage. Torterra deals, what, 50 times the amount of evolved Pokemon in play, and right now our opponent has four. We're going to be seeing at least 200 damage, which is very, very impressive, frankly. Here comes that Reversal Energy. So they can attack with that Evo Press. Do 200 to our Electrode. 
and uh, we can accelerate that energy onto our Rotom, which is fantastic. We knew that that EXP share was going to be critical. And now it really just comes down to whether or not we can top deck a Voltorb. I feel like if we get the Electrode, sorry, if we get the Electrode, we should be fine. We don't get the Electrode, but we do top deck Boss. And that is very, very interesting. Okay. So now we're in a very, very interesting spot because we can get a two prize knockout here to put ourselves well in the lead. We can scrap short and gust knock out the Pidgeot, which would be a very, very strong play here. We're going to use the Snorlax's Voraciousness and grab ourselves a Leftovers, and we can just chuck those down in preparation for an attack from a Electrode. Right now, we really just need to take a Knockout. I think it's pretty simple here. Um, we can Super Rod in Energy and Electrodes if we want to. It might be worth doing that, just a couple of Electrodes and an Energy in, maybe just one of each. I think we'll go with the double electrode and the energy. Hopefully we can draw into them. Let's scrap short here. We can deal up to 640 damage. I'm not going to go that far. We'll just throw away the minimum that we need because it's 40 plus 40 more. And then it will be times by two. Let's just lock. I mean, it doesn't matter. We can just get rid of those out of the loss zone anyway. 480 damage is way more than we need. That's ridiculous. And now we draw two cards up to the prizes. And we hope that we get what we need. Now, we do have the Rotom V-Star, which would be very, very good if we had access to our V-Star power. But alas, I don't think that is going to happen. I mean, on the plus side, we can throw down the Rotom and give it 250 HP, which is better than nothing. It'll mean that our opponent won't be able to get a knockout unless they have five evolutions in play. But as you can see, they already have four. And that is probably too many than we... That's more than we can handle right now. Four will knock out the Rotom in the active. And we pretty much just need to throw this Voltorb up into the active and hope for the best, realistically. Like, there's not a huge amount more that we could do. Maybe we can throw the Snorlax into the active because we've got the Escape Rope. The knockout should be doable with any one of our Pokemon. Um, but losing this Rotom V is actually quite a concern. So we might be in a position now where we, we need to get a little bit lucky to try and win this game. A Cynthia's Ambition from our opponent. So that is a massive hand and also a Pidgeot V-Star. So right now they're in a position where if we win next turn, we win. But if we don't, then our opponent is going to get the dub. So we'll wait and see if we can get what we need. And to be honest, off the top deck, we probably just need to draw a research. Like, I mean, that's pretty much the only card, realistically, that I could see helping us here. Anything else is really quite awkward. Oh, no. Okay, let's, uh... Let's... Well, I mean, there's nothing for us to do. All we need to do is just hope for the best. Hope that we draw into the card that we need, and... Hope that that's enough to win the game. To be honest, like I said, there's only one card that I can really see being relevant, and that is a professor's research if we get that an escape rope then maybe we can draw into what we need but it's going to be very very difficult in saying that i do have two pokemon with 250 hp after i evolve this rotom let's just throw this vault orb into the active and see what we find we get a stone so that's not good we can go for the artisan grab ourselves another snorlax and then i think it's a simple matter of just trying to stall our opponent out here we don't have access to that V-Star power because we've already used the Forest Seal Stone. And maybe that'll hurt us here. Let's escape rope. Our only hope now is that our opponent does not have a copy of Boss's Orders in their deck. If they don't, then we'll win. Oh, if they do, though, it's very, very bad. All we can do now is just pass the turn and wait. It looks like we might have just whiffed. But, you know, I'll take that. We got pretty much all the things that we wanted to do done. We attacked with Electrode. We attacked with Rotom V-Star. So now we just need to wait and see. Does our opponent have boss in a 24-card deck? You would have to assume so. Here comes a Luxray and a boss. So that will do the job 
330 damage with the Evo Press there to round out the game for our opponent, but you know what? I'm pretty happy. We got everything that we wanted to get done done. We had a pretty good game. Electrode took some knockouts, and against a two prize deck, we very easily could have had that. So I'm going to stick with it. Thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate you coming past as usual. Check out all the other videos.